Hello, my name is Timothy Troni. I'm here with the TI's Clock and Timing Group. I'm here to talk to you about using the LMK48 2X device in JETIC applications, specifically JESD 204B. To demonstrate, I have a 482080 valve board here. I have a 122.88 megahertz reference going into the 4828 IC. I have power for the device. I have the clock outputs connected to the oscilloscope for measurement. And I also have the programming cable hooked up through the USB to any. This programming cable is connected to the laptop, which I will use with the code loader software to manipulate the timing waveforms. The 4828 has many different features and provides excellent performance. Particularly today, what I want to focus though on is the JESD 204B SysRef generation feature. Why use JESD 204B? Well, uh, I'll let these slides speak for themselves. On the left, you see a non JESD 204B solution. In between the converter and the logic device, you see a whole lot of traces on whole different layers with lots of complications for trace length matching. That's a lot of work to lay that out. On the right, you can see a converter with just a few traces that are all very nicely organized and simple to route and lay out. That's because trace length matching is not uh, critical and as you can see this will simplify your board layout. Also when using JESD 204B the clocking solution is able to produce fewer frequencies which helps reduce spurious. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about what the system level diagram looks like for supporting the features we're about to discuss. After the PLLs that do the jitter cleaning and frequency multiplication, we have a clock distribution path which drives seven pairs of device clocks and sysref clocks. A JESD 204B target needs both a device clock and a sysref clock. Now, the 4828 can be used for conventional systems by programming the second clock to be a copy of the first device clock and have a total of 14 outputs. Or we can program it to accept the sysref output. The sysref is generated from the same clock source, but is divided by the sysref divider. This sysref divider will then goes into a pulsar function or straight out to the sysref mux to provide the clock to the sysref path. Now this has a dual purpose, this path. The first purpose is to synchronize these dividers to provide deterministic digital delay between all of the dividers. That's important for JESD 204B. The second purpose is to distribute the sysref signal itself to the logic devices to reset their internal counters. Here I show a slide with a device clock of 983 megahertz. Now your converter is going to have specifications for the requirements for a setup and hold time that the sysref must meet to provide a valid sysref clock to the device. Let's suppose our device has a setup time requirement of 400 picoseconds and a hold time requirement of 100 picoseconds. In the case of this 983 megahertz device clock, which has a period of a little over 1,000 picoseconds, that leaves me with a valid window of about 517 picoseconds. Now my digital delay on this device is able to adjust in a half period of the VCO frequency. In this case, I have about a 2.9 gigahertz VCO frequency. And this 2.9 gigahertz allows a full VCO cycle step of around 340 picoseconds. It also allows for me to step in a half period, which is about 170 picoseconds. So by using these two registers, the digital delay, which is a full cycle step, and the half step bit, which is a half cycle step, I'm able to tune the sysref to be at any one of these positions. Now what we'll do is find out what digital delay and what half step setting give us the best margin to the edge of this valid window. So let's go to code loader 
and look at the oscilloscope. So here we can see that we have clock out zero set up to 983 megahertz, as we do also below clock out two set up to 983 megahertz. These are the high speed device clocks. I also have their paired sysref clock operating at 960 kilohertz. Here you can see the rising edge of the sysref clock with respect to the edge of the device clock. So the 4828 allows us to make adjustments through digital delay to the sysref clock. So right now I have a five cycle delay and I can change that to a six cycle delay and you can see one full step of the VCO cycle. I can do that again and uh, so forth. There's also the ability to do a half step adjustment of the digital delay. By clicking the half step bit, I will advance this edge one half step of the VCO period. This is approximately 170 picoseconds. Now, to achieve the appropriate timing for the JESD system, I need to position the sysref inside the valid window of the device clock period. For our system that we discussed in the theoretical slide, suppose our converter has a 400 picosecond setup time and a 100 picosecond hold time. Right now, we can see that the setup timing from the sysref to the device clock measurement is shown in the measurement below is about 930 picoseconds. This is actually inside the hold window of the device and is therefore an invalid position for sysref. I will now move it one VCO cycle forward and now this setup time from sysref to device clock edge as shown in the measurement below is about 600 picoseconds. This is actually very good and gives us margin on the 400 picosecond required setup time and is out of the 100 picosecond hold time. If I were to adjust this forward one more VCO cycle, we would find that the sysref edge setup time to the device clock as shown in the measurement below is now about 250 picoseconds. This is invalid being inside the required setup time window. If I were to engage a half step to shift this back a half a VCO cycle, we can now see that the measurement from sysref to device clock is about 400 picoseconds. This is right on the margin of the required timing. So we would not use this setting either. The best setting from these adjustments is to go with the six cycle VCO delay without the half step. This gives us maximum margin from the leading edge of the valid window to the hold edge of the valid window. The measurement below indicates approximately 600 picoseconds, which is what we like. Right now, I have the 4828 set up to produce a continuous stream of sysref pulses. This is really useful for setting up your system and figuring out what sort of timing requirements, timing settings you should use on the digital delay. However, in application, you'll probably want to use the gapped periodic uh, mode or with the pulser. This produces just a few pulses every so often upon your request by either a pin or spy programming and allows you to synchronize devices. This way, you're not continually running clocks which could cause crosstalk and you'll reduce power. In addition to the uh, pulser mode, we also have the ability to generate a continuous stream of sysrefs as long as the user requests them by either a pin or spy programming. Finally, when coupling the sysref to your logic devices or converters, you may choose to use DC coupling. To support this, we provide the LC-PECL output mode. LC-PECL output 
allows you to use a resistive divider to achieve low common mode voltages required by these fine geometry parts with low voltage rails. So a voltage rail of one volt is no problem for us. We can achieve a common mode voltage of about 0.5 volts. So this concludes my demonstration of SysRef on the 4828 and how you can make its adjustments. For more information, please visit ti.com clocks. Thank you.